Welcome back to Smosh Mouth. I'm Shane. And I'm Amanda, and we're here with our wonderful guest, Chance McCrary. And I'm Chance McCrary. <laughs> and today we are talking about dating. We just dating and everything that comes with it. Uh, our dating histories, what we're like on dates, anything. And There's how no different, rules. And how different we are from each other since we all grew up in different places. And we're just all different. And different, <laughs> different, um, uh, yes, signs. <laughs> and we're different astrological signs. <laughs> yeah. Does astrological signs connect to yes. you date? What? Yeah, 100%. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. You don't think it does? I, mean, I don't maybe know. Maybe it does. Well, do all Virgos suck at dating? Because <laughs> <laughs> if that, that's, that's the case, what's okay. Going on. For sure. Uh, okay, let's. Let's figure out how to kick this thing off. Let's get into it. When when did you first start dating? And it can be stupid dating. It can be like it wasn't technically real, but it it felt you real. thought you thought it was real. Okay. You thought you were entering the okay. dating sphere. Cuz I know. You have a story? I do. What is it? Let's, but let's I feel like off. people are going to be mortified. But it's not bad. Only tell what you want to tell and all names are going to be changed Correct. or just redacted. I would say the first date like dating thing that I had and this okay. feels like really young yeah but this was when I was like really into someone second grade wow I th oh okay I get I get what you're it's not it's not, not crushes, like we went on no. dates I know what you're I know what you're saying we were really close friends he played the tuba okay <laughs> Amanda <laughs> And he was following me around going listen he played the tuba he lived <laughs> He and if you could make me laugh. Wait, the tuba was bigger than him. He's in second grade. Unless, are there smaller was, tubas? He was no, it was very are there big. It was tubas? A, a child it was, tuba. It was very big. Child's tuba. <laughs> it was very big. And he carried it everywhere. He didn't have a thing That's for so it. Cute. So he carried it everywhere. He was so white and so nerdy. And so jacked and from I, carrying that tuba. He wasn't jacked at all. His arms were f Dude, I, I liked him. I had a crush on him, and we were friends. So one time I would hang out at his house. Oh, see, this is me. I'm like, I, whenever people talk about this this stuff, I'm always yeah. like, what's his name? Name him. I won't make you do that. But there's something about it. There's some power in a name I that I'm know. like, name him. Well, I'm not going to name him. I'm going to just call him Don't. Tuba Boy. I like that. And Tuba Boy and I would hang out. And one time we were hanging out and we were just sitting there and we never kissed or, of course, anything. We're in second grade. That's I don't of even. Of course. Well, not of course. I mean, I actually, I think I kissed and said, great. <gasps> Anyways, so we were just hanging out, and he was playing the tuba for me. Okay, <laughs> okay. And he hot. took off his shirt. Oh. And was his it? mom. Did you like what you saw? I was like. <laughs> I mean, it's a second grade. Okay. <laughs> Nothing Man, happened. playing this tuba has really got me sweaty. <laughs> Better take this shirt off. took off Ew. his shirt. <laughs> I'll never forget this because it was the first time I was really made to feel bad about liking someone. He took off his shirt, and I thought... I was just like, we like each other. That's Tuba. crazy. He took off his the shirt. The first time you've been made to feel bad about liking yeah, yeah, someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. which infers that it's happened so many times. Oh, so many times. What? Who's making you feel bad about well, liking Well, I'm someone? just like a girl, and people are like, you shouldn't do that. Not my family. My mom was very cool about it. But like people in school, teachers. You know what I'm saying? But you're no. really just... Uh, uh, in second grade, but when you're dating grade, someone, I was young. you're just hanging out with someone. We weren't even, we weren't dating. We were just yeah. like friends. You're literally friends. But he did take off his shirt while playing the tuba. And so that was the first one you were like, we're dating. No, I was like, <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. I wouldn't even say the word dating was in my head. Ain't that the fucking truth? I was like, I like you, and you play the tuba. And he took off his shirt, and I remember him being like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like you and you play the tuba. He's like awesome. He took off his shirt and continued to play the tuba. Yeah. And his mom walked in and she was like, <gasps> You need to go home. Oh. And she had my mom pick me up immediately. <gasps> oh yeah. my god. She knew the what the f And going we on. didn't hang out after that. Oh you, no. That was the end the, of never, Tuba Boy. Did you ever Have talk you? to him? Yeah, we talked, but he was really like stayed away from me. Did he go to the same high school as you? Yeah, uh, well, what? middle school. Did yeah. he have a oh middle school or, or you, whatever and he went it was? To different high schools. Um, you would remember if he was there. Yeah, he wasn't there. And that kid, K 
Kenny G. <laughs> no, oh God, Kenny G. No, uh, Kenny G. Uh, as a kid. Uh, uh, so that okay, was really, wow. That was really the first one, and I think that was a big lesson for me. Where I got in so much trouble when I'm like, I didn't take off my shirt. He took off his nothing. shirt, and we didn't even do anything. Yeah. Yeah, but what were you wearing? I was wearing a big. <laughs> I was wearing a big dress. <laughs> I was wearing a dress. <laughs> that was a layered joke. That was very that was layered. Very you have to be insane. very nuanced. No, I know. Joke. But let me let me tell you honestly, I was very into <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Okay. I was into big dresses. Our AD I just wore spit a... out her coffee. <laughs> no way. She said, holy shit. I wore a mini skirt. No, I actually was very into like old like never colonial was, dresses. Never on, never on. I, know, I feel like every second grade dress. back when I was in school, every second grade girl dressed like it was the 1800s. I feel <laughs> yeah. like yeah, they, I, 100%. I, yeah, like just, four cardigans. Yeah, it's, it's like, like no. It's, and especially back in the 2000s, dude, yeah. the amount of layers yeah. everyone was wearing. I looked like an American Girl doll. I had like the <laughs> colonial, and I had no. a huge. Oh, no. I had big puffy dresses in second grade. Okay, no wonder the tuba guy liked you. Yeah, I was you got like layers on layers. I was literally like, good stuff. He's sir. like, shh, shh, shh. she's like a human sir. tuba. <laughs> oh dear, Mr. Darcy has his tuba out. Oh no. And the mom was like, get out! We're breaking up your mom immediately. And I was like. Okay, I grab like my handkerchief. I'm like, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> so Shane, who was your first? Dude? Okay, so not second grade, but I do remember kids dating in like second to fifth yeah. grade. Yeah, but it was really just that they hung out. You Maybe know, did they hold hands? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was stuff like that. It was just that their their boyfriend girlfriend. And it was just something that we'd say. Yeah. But there was really nothing else. There that was nothing they could do because they were to in second. And there was, and really, I didn't have any uh, crushes or anything. But there was, uh, there was a girl who, like, everybody was just like, yeah, she's the the she's like the one. She's the one. And yeah. we didn't even know what we were saying. The Regina George. It was just kind of like, yeah, she's, yeah, she's the one we're supposed to think it is. Yeah. The, she's the one we're supposed to like. What does yep. she look like? Looking back, normal. 1800s dress. Look, she looked like every other. So, there was really nothing. You have to describe it. I, I really don't know. <laughs> well, because every other for every other for me is probably a different every other than a lot. I, of I just mean if uh, like looking back in my memory, there was no blonde reason. Or brunette. I was about to say uh, blonde or brunette. Was she, she white? Was, she um she was white. She was she was like a dark blonde, okay. I think. But it was really, I am genuinely confused as to why. I think it was just determined, and it might have been because she had a boyfriend. What color were oh. her eyes? <laughs> you can't even remember. Well, I think, I think, I Black. Think blue? I really don't. I really don't remember. She had, she I had wasn't, horns three I feet say, high. I wasn't too uh, infatuated or cared. That she much, was just, someone was, said they had a crush on It was on just like yeah. the thing that and was kind of determined. She was the one. But overall, at our school, it really wasn't. We had Dating wasn't like a thing. In elementary school, we had like the girl that was like hot, and she won most attractive senior year. Of high school. Of okay, high so school. She was hot. Whoa, so. She. Um, yes, she was hot. The prophecies were did, true. There were there there were other hot people that could have won a hundred percent, but it was like she was it was it was always like she's Understood. the one, no matter how she's Understood. aging, she is the one. But I I didn't I didn't care too much. Um Rachel. and then I, I would say the first time that I had a crush was in sixth grade. There was a new girl at our school, Ooh. and I remember for whatever reason I was just like Oh my God, I didn't talk to her. New girls, what is that? But it was just, well I think it was just, I hadn't History. seen a new person in since I started at this school. So it had been five five or so years that I had just been hanging out with the same people. And so, yeah. and then suddenly there's in. there's a new person and I'm just like. A new challenger. But it was still, I was still very young so it was really like infatuation. And it was just like, whoa. Um, but wait, you didn't talk to her. I didn't, I mean, yeah, not really. Like, I think there's probably some conversations, but I didn't, we didn't like hang out or talk. I just was like, she was in the same class as me of like 30 kids, but. So who was the first one that you were like, I'm talking to this girl? Well, so cut to a year later, <gasps> uh, seventh grade, I still think she's just so like Smoking. gorgeous and stuff. And, uh, but you know, I will, yeah. Um, eventually, I forget how, but there was the opportunity. A, a friend of mine was like, "Yeah, she thinks you're cute." <gasps> what? And I was like, "What?" When you get that information, oh 
Oh my God. Yeah, it changes everything. It's like you got a million dollars from someone's like, hey, Bubba thinks you're cute. You're like, no, 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 no. You're but, like lying on something. But to, to put things in perspective, as I, I guess is to say like I'm an anxious person now. I don't know how that's that's read, but I am an anxious person now. But back when I was a kid, up until my mid-20s, I was so anxious and in my head. So I did eventually ask her out. I forget how. And I, I, I don't even know if it was, it must have been just like, hey, do you want to be my girlfriend? And she's just like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. What do we do now? So what do we do now? We yeah. dated We dated for yeah. a week. Yeah. We held hands. We did nothing else. This, of course. I never even, we never even exchanged numbers because we were so, I was just so like. You were like, I did it. I did what I had I, to I do. I truly, I truly oh. had, and I want to get into this later because I was talking to someone about just dating culture for straight dudes and how f***ed it is uh, in so many ways, but from our own perspective. But that really was part of it. And uh, yeah, once we were in it, I, I was like, I, I don't. What do we do? We would sit next to each other at lunch. I would sit with her and her friends and I would just kind of sit there. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> um, no. And, and so here's, I'll, I'll tell you the first cringiest thing of my dating life. This was, this was the first. Um, I had heard this joke uh, oh, no. from a friend of mine. No. And I thought it was so funny. No, 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 no. And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna throw this out. Oh, Not shame. at the lunch table, I hope. At the lunch table. Oh, oh my God, that's, that's your type five right there. That's <laughs> you guys are gonna see this coming from the first sentence, but mind you, we're in seventh grade, so okay, this so was this was, this was perhaps crop. revolutionary at the okay. time. I'm sitting next to her, and uh, there's like a break in the conversation. And I just go, "Dude, the other day, I um, the other month, I was I was fishing with uh, some some friends of mine, and it was it was crazy. We were sitting there for hours and nothing, and then suddenly." I got a bite and I was like, oh my gosh. And, and nobody had had any luck that day. And all of a sudden I'm reeling it out. I'm pulling it back in, I'm reeling it out. I'm pulling it back in. And this thing is, I can tell this is unbelievable. Everyone's freaking out. It's tipping the boat. And, I, and I'm sitting there and I swear like a half hour goes by and I'm fighting this thing. And finally I pull it out and I swear to God, this fish was this big. And then I put my arm around her. No! And then <laughs> Shame. Oh no, no. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming, and I wish it. I wish it never came. I wish it never came. I wish it never. Oh God! Dude. Please tell me that the friends were like, "What did they? What happened?" Uh, we. I think they all laughed, but you know what else are you gonna yeah, do? Some of them cried. I think they all cried. I think <laughs> they all cried so hard. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't I think thinking. I was. Uh, yeah, and then I. Then my arm was there, Aww. and then I had no clue what the hell to do once again once again it was a what do i do now uh i've only thought about how to get to that point that's but that's such a common thing in dating though what do i do now well there's no playbook no and i'm gonna repeat this several times throughout this but for straight dudes at least because that's that's the perspective i'm speaking from so much of it is just about this is what i should be doing and who's telling this is what that? I this is what I mean society media True. everything uh any anytime I would google anything like it was just it's you know definitely then I mean it's probably worse now of just it's pickup culture and it's entirely about getting the girl but nothing has no we are never you ever taught know. about how to That's actually how to actually be in a relationship yeah and make there's someone. nothing so zero weird. resources, zero men are trying to talk about that. It's all about, here's how you get the girl. Here's how you ask her out and get get on that date. It's like, okay, great. Once once you're there. I think there are This men. actually makes so much sense for like my past dating because it's oh, yeah. all the women are like, are you gonna do something? Like no. what are, but that you guys don't know. Well, I think we intu intuitively Well, and know. And furthermore, a big issue for me, and I think it's the case for a lot of dudes, is that we are so uh, focused on doing the impressive thing or the right thing that we're not actually forming any sort of real connection. Because I'm not actually there. Mm. I'm sitting there trying to play a, a board game in my head. A board game is exactly it's, what it is. What it is. It's, well, it's game. It's a game. And we refer to it as game, and we talk about that, of that guy's got game. And so we're all trying to have game, 
but we're not actually forming real connections or actually being there with a person because we're putting on a persona. We're doing moves, and so you don't actually feel any sort of joy. And so most of my dating life, uh, and especially that one, was just uh, anxiety. There was no actual joy. I didn't have a good time. Wow. For that that week, and then she 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 would just ended it one day, and I was like, like yeah. The, remember the fishing thing? Yeah. Yeah. That was really fucked up. I was frankly relieved when we when it was done because I was yeah. like, I don't know yeah, what this exhausting. is, it's also and I had exhausting. no idea what to do. I realized I was like, I don't know what the fuck yeah a relationship is. To be honest, that explains so much because you guys present yourself like you know exactly what you you're guys. doing. Oh. Straight men present themselves like you know exactly what you're doing. Clueless. And then when it comes down to it, I'm talking about when I was younger, when it comes down to or older, you're just, we're just like, hello? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's everyone. That's everyone. So what was your first? Uh, my Crush first or dating? Cr I had crushes um, that were all girls. Um, uh, I had a crush in second grade. I went and gave her a Valentine. But second grade. Yeah, yeah second, baby. Oh, it was second grade. You're right. Yes. Um, but the first girl that I asked out was in middle school, and she, I was reading Harry Potter at the time. Very cool. And I went to a very white high school, <laughs> super white high school, and there was this girl who reminded me of Cho Chang, and I loved her, and I was like, but I loved her because she reminded me of Cho Chang, and it was oh. Harry Potter, and I wanted to be the main character. But she was also really cool. You wanted to be Harry? I wanted to be Harry. Okay, got which it. Which I'm not Harry. Not at all. No, no. not at You're all. You're more of a Slytherin, And I do I not ever want to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to move past that. Um, and I don't want to be Harry. But I asked her out, and she was like, no. And so that was like, I was like, oh, Because I was also, I also felt othered. I also felt othered, and so I was like, maybe we can connect because you're different, I'm different. Let's. And she was like, F no, and I was like, oh no. Uh -huh. But then I asked out um, this other girl, freshman year of high school. That was my second second bout. I was like, let's do it. And I asked her to go as my date to a senior's birthday party. It was a disco themed birthday party, and I cool. at this time had a fro, <laughs> had a Hell huge yeah. fro. So I was like, we've was, seen those photos of you in yes, high school. Yeah. I was like, I'm the guy. If you're going to a disco party, I'm, I'm the, the guy. guy. <laughs> uh, she said yes to the disco party, and then at the disco party, I was like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And she was like, yes. And then word got out that we. I don't know how it got out so quickly. Of she course. Was friends. The next day, I show up at school. And everyone's like coming up to me, she's like, congratulations, like blah, blah, blah. Really weird, really weird. And then she comes up to me and she's like, hey, can we talk? And I was like, oh, oh no. no. And then she break up with you oh, right there. Oh, she broke up with me the next day. Dude, I had that sort of happen once. It was like, I, she talked to her friends, she talked to- Her friends. It was oh, her, friends. her friends. Do you think one of her friends maybe liked you? Was like, oh, oh, Shane, I've never thought about that. Oh, it's yeah. possible. I don't know. These I took friends. it too personally, and you're not supposed to take things personally. No, not when it's like that, no. because she barely knows you. Yeah, she, we she knew, we, we knew each other. Okay, oh. we're like in the we same. I think we're in the same I, friend I, group. I, if anything, it could just be that this this avalanche of everyone knowing about it. She maybe yeah. just was like scared. I'd be scared of that. She's now time. married to someone who was in my small group. Yeah, That's in great. The same does small he group. have a big afro? <laughs> no, he. Could doesn't. you imagine? No, he doesn't. I, a bigger afro. I'm like, <laughs> it's that guy. He has a bigger afro than me. That's her type. This is crazy because just hearing about this, it it, it answers so many things for when you're first starting to date. Because I feel like when you're first dating, you are so influenced by everybody. Yeah, you are so in. I think still. But more so when you are in high school, middle school, because you're basically all in camp together. Oh, yes. And you're so influenced, and you're and you so see each other every day. Influenced by your friends. Yeah. Your friends. Yeah. Say what they want to say. Your friends will tell you to do things, and they don't always do it. No. Because they. You're right. Like, oh, that person's not good for you. Sometimes it's because they have a crush on that person. That's fucked yeah. up. <laughs> I didn't have because I didn't go to a physical high school, but. I had I can relate in a lot of ways because being here amongst like a bunch of child actors, mm. we kind of formed our own. It, like I was hanging out with people my age all yeah. the time. It was a smaller group, and as I've mentioned before, the dynamics were weird because the popular kids or the cool kids 
were the ones who were on TV shows, which I think gives them a lot more basis for being My God, cool. that's yeah. like really You know, it's like, so oh, well, up. yeah, you're on a TV show and, and we're all trying to be actors. So you're also, you've achieved the thing we're all out here f- to oh, do. Oh, that's hard. So the dynamics are really tough. It's like, dude, he's on Zoe 101. He's so cool. That's Logan. really hard. There was, oh, the Zoe 101 crew, the Victorious crew. Oh, my God. No, that was... had so much anxiety. I think we can all Oh, yeah. Ours, the seniors were just like, they were really good at football. They were really good at hockey. They Ooh. Really, that was yeah. our, like, I mean, top. But we were, in your that, sphere, that's also like being on TV. That's it true. It was. It was the same thing. Because they were in newspapers. <laughs> we went to a super, it was a weird southern school. Mm. Um, where it was equal parts sporty and equal parts artsy. Cool. So like, the like the divergent. Really, it was like <laughs> divergent. So are you, you artsy divergent. or sporty? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> you must choose. Or are you smart? And you can be you can be multiple. And there were people that were multiple. Wait, they were on the football she, team. They were like. He plays football, but he also likes to paint. He is <laughs> divergent. Oh. Shane, Shane only sees things we realize in uh, like. TV shows. I only, movies. I can't relate to real life. It has to be TV or <laughs> movie like that, or I don't know. I love that. <laughs> I okay, go that. on. So you're so, divergent. I'm not, oh no, hold on. <laughs> you, were, you were art. I was art. Yes. I was you were art. art. I was art, but I was like the right. head, I was like the big guy, I was like the guy to do mm-hmm. the art thing. Nice. But then there were people who would like cross over and they were so powerful. They felt like the avatars of our oh, high school. Oh, when they had cross if they're over. On, you can be the running back and then you can come do the open mics and kill a song. That's, Those a, were the that's cool. And then stars. you're on student council? No, that's dude, cool. that's too powerful. Those, see, ours were totally different. If you were on student council, we were like, okay. Oh no, we were achievers. <laughs> oh no. No, us, we were like woods parties. Football. Oh no! Like, you were just in dazed and confused. We were yeah. literally in dazed and confused, and it was the person who was like the really mysterious person with yeah. the dirt bike. Yeah. We were like, oh my. Well, maybe it was just me. I was like, oh. I fully. My God. No. I fully get that from you. Do you get that from <laughs> like, me? Yeah. Ours. I never wanted to date a football player. Mine was always like the dirt biker, the guy in the woods party. Oh shit! The you big, like the, grungy. the jeans that were shorts. Think yeah. about it. The oh, long jeans. You shorts. were you were into Fred Durst. Oh <laughs> my God. Give me that every day. Chain, a chain, a t-shirt. Thinking about <laughs> So we I'm know like, Amanda's there, type. Hearing you talk about that, I'm like, who did I have crushes on in high school and middle school? And the people that I had crushes on, I don't think I knew that I had crushes on or I was just lying to myself about even having crushes. Because I'm gay, so like the clock starts later. So okay. You have to come out to yourself before you okay, come out to other so people. so you are yeah. gay. So when did you start actually going after Bo- boys, men? men? Um, I mean, it was in college. Cause I went to school in Chicago and it was such a different, um, it was such a different, ecosystem of people yeah. uh, as compared to Tennessee, where like in Tennessee, it wasn't like shame. It wasn't like they were like, it was shame, actually. It was mm-hmm. shame, It was, but it wasn't a vocalized thing. It was like, oh, you can't do that. Like a side eye, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, subtle, yeah. or like, oh, bless your heart. Societal. Like, societal, but like, it was a shush, shush shame. Yeah. It wasn't like we're gonna like beat you up. Some people it was like we're gonna beat you up, but it was never like that. Cause we're, we're all about love and acceptance, but we're not really. Yeah. Right. And I go to Chicago and then they're actually about love and acceptance, but with this hard exterior. And uh-huh. so it was a different ecosystem. So it was like, okay, now you're allowed to, even though I was allowed to like boys there, still like stayed away from it for like three years in Chicago, three years. So you were still mm-hmm. kind of like having dating history with women. Of yes, yes, I had I have girlfriends in college. Oh. What was what was that like? I'm just so curious. Well, I was in the theater program. And so oh. it was like it's already you were slim. Just making out with everybody. It's already slim. No, I wasn't. Oh. It was already slim pickings for for women who want straight guys in the theater program and I was one yeah, of the straight impossible. I was one of the straight <laughs> guys. <laughs> And so I was like one of the guys, and I felt like a king because I was like, "Well, you can't choose anyone else." Musicals and everything. You were like, <laughs> "I'm gonna date," and all the guys were like, "Hi, you want to?" And you're like, I'm "Nobody." Like, I believe. <laughs> and they're like, "He's straight." You're like, "Are you hot. sure?" No, he's straight. No, a hundred percent. They did that shit. Um, 
So I dated a couple people, but it didn't it didn't work. And I was doing all the right things, and I was so romantic. Oh my god, I was such a good boyfriend. But but were you you weren't you were just kind of playing out a script? Yes. Yeah. So you weren't actually having a like you're probably okay. You might have been having fun, but not you no. I was actually... having fun, but I wasn't doing any of the things that I wanted to be right. doing. But I will say the first boy that I hooked up with, I won't say dated, but I will say hooked up with, was my crush. So I went to a play. I went to see The Wiz. Oh yeah. yeah. The my uh, my first week at Northwestern, and I saw a guy who was the Tin Man, and I was like, you. <laughs> You are <laughs> so cute, like so hot. Like I was like, that's my type. Even before I was out, I was like, that's my type. I was like, I know you are the one. The Tin Man was your sexual awakening. So then, <laughs> bef- so then when he was graduating, he was a year above me. When he was graduating in that summer, he was like, do you want to come to a party I'm having? Well, while he was in the theater program. I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I came and he like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> not me going into, I was in a frat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For sure, Let's dude. not forget, I was in a frat. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on, just got to grease my joints really quick. <laughs> no. No. You no. Ding, ding. <laughs> so I went to this party with them, which also the frat we need to talk about too a little bit. Because that is like dating, but dating friendship, but not hooking up with people. Some people hook up, but okay. some people hook. But it's like you're having all the parts of dating without Without that's what I love about dating. It depends on the the ecosystem that you're yes, in. Totally. Changes all the way that totally. you date. Totally. But keep yeah. going. Yeah. Um, so I went to a party and he was like escorting me around and I was like, This is but this is this is my coming out. I have not hooked up with a guy, I've never been with a guy ever. And it was the tin man. And he walked me around the party, he got me a couple drinks, and then he knew I wasn't out, but he was very much out. And so he was like, Do you want to come sit by me on the couch? So I came and sat by him on the couch. And he's like, eh. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just he, kidding. <laughs> he's, he put his hand in the cushions of the couch because all my friends were around and I wasn't out. And he was like, Chance. And he like gestured to the couch. And I put my hand in and I got to hold his hand in Aww. the cushions of the couch. That is actually well, all my so friends. sweet. <laughs> that is, that's like, I'm all surprised I haven't seen that. That is very sweet. And then like all my friends started leaving and it was his apartment because it was his party. Oh, he was like, hell yeah. I was like, I need to probably leave soon. He was like, can I walk you out? And I was like, yeah, of course. And he comes and walks me out. I'm this, I'm not out yet. I'm not out yet. I've never done anything. And he walks me to the stairwell and he's like, can I kiss you? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. <gasps> this is my crush from when I was a freshman. I was like, oh my God. And so I kissed him. And he's like, do you want to come up to my room? And I was like, not nah, too much. Slow down, slow down, slow good down. Good for down. you. Is that good for me? I don't know. Yeah. See, is. society. I had such, yeah, I had such shame that I was like, I can't go to your room. Oh. Yeah. But I understand. See? I understand why. It was overwhelming. I, I was understand. That's also, so much. Also, it was so much but also already. Chance, good for you because I think you would have been like, whoa. Yeah. And you got time to like process. Yeah. Were you still in your head saying I'm straight? No. No. But you you 100%. knew internally, but you like, just hadn't the moment. you hadn't told anyone. I hadn't told anyone. So then I at, right after I walked away from his apartment, I'm like calling my friends. I'm like, me and Kyle just like hooked up. Like, well, did we you guys just... did you guys date? No, we didn't date. But I did sleep with him the next week. Good nice. For you. It took a week, and he was like, "See, you want to come?" I know. In a way, it's like societal pressures are sometimes like, "Hey, don't shame me," but then sometimes they poke us enough where we can be like, actually wait, let me take some time to process this. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because when you rush into something, then it's like when you go, it's like when you do too many things in a day, you're like, I don't even know what my day was. Right. And I think we underestimate how much time we have. Yes. We can be patient. Also a kiss can last like days yes. thinking about it. Totally. Oh, it's 100%. so fun. A good kiss, a, a right good, kiss. Yeah. A bad kiss? A bad kiss can also last days, but Whoa. for the wrong reason. Or it can last a lifetime, depending on what you got in that mouth. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's also, I feel like, very connected to worst dating stories. I feel like kissing is like 80% of a worst date. 80? Holy no. shit. As For soon me? as I sit down at the table or wherever we are, as soon as I walk in, I will see your aura, I will know your vibe, and I will know if it's a yes or a no okay. as soon as I walk but in. But then oh. when you kiss them, if they're a terrible kisser, what happens then? I, I think I'm such a good kisser that it doesn't matter. Mm, They'd have I, to I, be I, horrendous. They would have to be so bad. Like I, 
I really am, can only think of a couple people who were bad at kissing. That's one because bit too much, two because mouth too slobbery. But that's not on the skills <laughs> mouth too slobbery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You sound like you have really bad kisses. Is what? No, I'm I maybe only... you're a really bad kisser. Maybe no, that's... And no. Maybe you're the operative. Maybe no, maybe I'm it's incredible you. Incredible kisser. Okay. No, I've had a couple bad kisses for sure, and they have. It has. Wow. Well, I definitely. I think when I was a teenager, I was because I it was so few and far between, and once again, I was like, this is probably. I had no clue what I was you were doing. Kissing girls. As not 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 I was much. Like, I wasn't. I not much. I had, a, I had a I had a couple. I had like two. Yeah. Wait. So when was your first kiss? Uh, thirteen. Natalie Booth. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> she would love that. Okay. Okay. When was yours? <laughs> uh, I think I was fourteen. It was Truth or Dare. <gasps> so, yes, mine was too. Yeah, it was in front of everyone. It mine was too at yeah. a bonfire. And um, yeah, but I I definitely look back and I'm like, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing, and I think it was you know. I don't know when my first kiss was. Thank God for Trisha Dare. It what? might have been Tuba Boy later, but no! I think it was <laughs> the resurgence of Tuba Boy. Tuba ten, Boy? Ten years later, Tuba Boy the shows of up. Tuba Boy? My first kiss, I remember Tuba exactly Man. <laughs> when it was. I was 12, I had braces on, and my boyfriend, we were like, do you want to date? Yes. Well, I didn't, what was a boyfriend when you were 12? That's fair. But we were, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We would hold hands. Everyone knew that we were dating and it was in our friend's house and they were peeking through the door and they they watched us kiss and we both had braces. And we, that was my first kiss. So what was, was your first relationship? That. The fir the, that was your first mm -hmm. relationship. We dated for four years. Whoa, that's a long time, Amanda. And he gave me an engraved... <gasps> Tiffany's bracelet That's when insane. I was 14 Holy with our names Yeah, on. but the disposable Shit. income of a 14-year-old well, is his, 100%. He, he, his dad owned a car shop, and so he worked all the time. <gasps> mm. And I remember I would hide. It was the old-school Tiffany's, the silver with the big like link chain, and it had a heart, and our names were engraved on it. Mm. And I had to hide it at dinner all the time. So I would have it underneath sweaters, and I would hide it. And one time at dinner, and my mom... Did not like him because mm. he rode a dirt bike and he would pick oh. me up. Of, of course, you're tired. the back of the house He's and he would have pick some me up and bike. we would go dirt bike riding and my mom despised That's hot. It. That's pretty cool. Yep. Oh, put me on the back of a motorcycle. I've been on dirt bike in the quarry. Do you know what a quarry is? Yeah, I know what a quarry is. So we would like be in the woods and do like these crazy things. And I would, I remember I hit it and my mom saw it and I was in so much trouble. For having a Tiffany's bracelet. Yeah, and also for dating one guy for four years. She was like, don't you want to explore? I remember oh, she shit. said that. Wow. She was like, don't you want to? Yeah, I my mom that. My mom was very supportive about dating. Remember, I had two older sisters ahead of but me. But that's yeah. very Portuguese. Very Portuguese. Yeah. Dating dating was like living, yeah, like breathing. Exactly. Like it was like, my mom was very supportive. My dad was like, yeah, just shut the door. Like couldn't. But that was a big thing for me. That was like a big relationship for me. So, yeah. Wow. I I had no relationships. I like pseudo like one month or two month things where nothing really happened, and uh, you know it was just more like yeah we're talking. We're, we're talking. But uh, and that that really I had I had like only one, and that was when I was like fourteen, fifteen. But then for the majority of my teenage years, I. Really hardly dated. I hardly what about had your any. 20s? Uh, even then, it, like I really struggled. I like didn't have a. I wasn't in a relationship until I was like twenty two, twenty three. Um, so You're I was very that like it's late, but I would like yeah. to reference the gay clock again. Yeah, because that's when it. I mean, it starts most. A lot of people now it's a little different, but a lot of people don't start till after they leave their parents' house. Well, I know it's really I know it's which is it's eighteen, which is when you start even yeah. experimenting with having a crush. Mm. On. Sure, I wasn't really yeah, cause cause I came out here and so my mom and I were in an apartment and I was like going to auditions and stuff. Mm -hmm. It really you wasn't were working. It wasn't. I was I had you a career, working, yeah. and so a big thing of why I think I was also anxious was that there were stakes where if I got in trouble, there was something huge that could be taken away. Mm. And they never threatened it, and nothing ever really happened, but uh, I knew like, oh, if I fuck up, 
My, the, we will move back to, to Arizona. So, much so I really, I really did not get into trouble because I was like, I, I, I didn't get into trouble because I was like, I don't want to get into trouble. I didn't get into trouble because I was like, I don't want to lose this of whole course. thing. My whole of life. Yeah. I'm like, my career. Yeah. I'm going to be a big actor. Damn, I need to do so much this. much pressure, Shane. I'd put it on myself. but No, uh, no not really. <laughs> I guess, there, yeah. But um, so I think that that hindered a lot of my ability. I think back on if I had stayed in Arizona and just gone to high school and really had no stakes. If I was just like, I'm just going to high school and doing yeah. my thing. There are still stakes. There are so There's many still stakes, stakes. But I... I would have probably done done a lot more stuff, right? But I didn't because I was very focused on my career. And I had acting coaches who were were constantly saying stuff like focus on your career. Like do not oh. do don't do not do anything else. like don't don't put anything above that priority wise. Oh. And I listened to that. That's also the power that adults have. Careful the things you say. Well, uh, uh, that is a that's, again that's, a societal I think it's, thing. I, I yeah, think we dating. see we see so many child actors end up in bad places once they're older. And I think a big problem is that for child actors, you, the authority figures in your life are often telling you misguided things, or yeah. they're just and so they're just focused trying on their career. best. They they have great intentions for, they for the most part, the but they're they all book or they're all and you know. There's there's a lot of layers to that. But also, they probably had their teenage years. I probably I, no, they had. They their had. Teenage. I'm exactly. so grateful for my teenage years. I am so grateful that my mom was like, "If you get brought home by the cops, that's on you," which has happened. Yeah. And it's like I am so grateful that my mom was like, "Go get your heart broken a million times." Go love, go party in the woods, and it's not like she said that, but that's what but happened. But yeah, I feel yeah. like as time progresses. Now your 20s are like your teenage years, weirdly. I think things are different now. Yeah. Things are um, very different now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to move yeah. on from, from teenage years because yeah. I think yeah. we're going to talk about that more next week. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think things are changing. And I've, yes. everything I read about nowadays is talking about how people are lonelier than they've ever been. Yeah. Dating is more, like, mm. dead than it's ever been. Especially, uh, speaking from my perspective, all I read about is how straight men are like, yeah, we're just not dating. We're, yeah, because I think people need single. to find mm. microcosms. They need to find their own ecosystems, and it's hard to find an ecosystem when you are a, a, accessible to everyone. Is yeah. that because of, do you think online dating makes it way harder? Do you think online dating makes people feel Listen, more lonely? As I had the apps for years. I got rid of the apps about uh, almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. And I have had so much more success dating off of the apps. This is an anti-Tinder message, <laughs> an anti-Hinge message. Mm -hmm. Because you start looking at people and the places that you are, like physically, or like the people that you know, and it is such a, it is so much better to meet people in person or through other people mm -hmm. than it is on the on the apps and the apps gets you in a mindset of like yes no yes no no right it's like, so it's much more so complicated than that it's so messed up it is up. so much more complicated than that and there are so many people who um i see them in pictures and then i see them in person and i'm like oh no 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 even if i see them in videos i'm like yes and then i see them i start talking to them i'm like no yeah. absolutely not mm -hmm. human but then human there's connection. there's people who i'm like I see them in person and I'm like, yes. And then I see their Instagram and I'm like, whoa, yes. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's what you, you did that with that? Because I was already into it and now I see what you're doing. Yeah. There's so much more nuance in person. So and there's much a lot more. of there's a lot of people who you see photos of, and the problem is a photo is a photo. A it, photo it can is a photo. really not capture uh, a person. And the other thing you, is TikTok too, because now I can see this person moving and talking and yeah. and like it but it's still not the same it's not the, it's not who they are so why no. do you think people why do you think people are lonelier than they've ever been i i do think dating apps have i i, I think it's fucked up our own heads and once again i'm going to primarily speak for my perspective and people who i think share my perspective is that as a as a straight dude on on dating apps it is mostly getting nothing in return and you know and i i'm sure also a lot of guys who are in my realm of if you are shorter or if you are not as attractive or whatever and and yeah like 
on photos when you're just boiling it down to two dimensional, yeah, you're probably not going to get the same amount of responses. But I also think dating apps, you just don't get a lot of responses as a guy sometimes. Mm. And, um, and there's probably a lot of reasons to that, you know, and I just think it gets you in a bad mindset. Yes. The swiping, I'm like, this is, this is messed up. Yeah. And it also gets you obsessed with dating in a way that I also think is yeah, unhealthy. unhealthy. And I think we are more obsessed with it than ever of it being a kind of societal marker. If you don't have it, then you're not successful. You need to, it is, it is a requirement. Which is not true. And it's so unnecessary. And it, it, it did make me want to just kind of rebuke it and not participate. Yeah. Um, but I, because <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, it's... getting getting rid of it, I found I had, I wouldn't say I had more success, but I just felt better. Yeah. I just absolutely felt better. Yeah. And I think, I think it does make you more present in the world. Mm -hmm. My advice, because I I see it constantly on the internet right now, of just dudes being like, it's hopeless. It's it's freaking hopeless. No women want me. I feel like nobody's interested. Whatever. I I think a big problem, and I've said this on Reddit stories, where I think a lot of straight dudes, what they really need, is to have friends who are women or just friends who are just not other straight dudes yeah to get yeah. different perspectives to to understand like it, it helps so much it kind of takes the weight off of dating i think a little bit yeah when you have a, a close uh friend who can offer you perspective like honest perspective of mm -hmm. like why did why do you think that girl wasn't into me or why, why do you think that date went that way and and i I've, I've always had that i've had friends who who i could talk to and i Having them as friends was always more impactful and more important than relationships. So I would say my advice to any guy who is like, I'm really struggling. I feel like I'll be single forever. Focus on making friendships. friendships. Focus on <laughs> friendships and you will build your network out. That is how you actually end up yeah. meeting people. And yeah. that's how I've met people. Um, and that's more than just meet, meet people. That's how everything has worked out in my life. I've always been... <laughs> this That's is a crazy advice. thing I'm going to say. I've always been lesbian adjacent. <laughs> okay? What does that mean? Well, yes. I'm I'll so break curious. that down. I'll break that down. Break it down. So like at work in high school, I was like the lesbian in me were like always, I would always find the lesbian. I'd be like, we're friends. And she'd be like, hell yeah, thank God. Because <laughs> like the rest of these people, like it, it's, there's something powerful about yeah. the perspective of like a um, guy, uh, if I'm looking at the binary, a guy who likes uh, not women and then a woman who likes not men so like we'll tell each other exactly how it is oh, the way it is yeah i love that it's yeah. so powerful it is the most freaking thing gay men if you're listening go find yourself a lesbian lesbian if you're listening go find a gay man they will tell you exactly that it's so powerful or you go find someone that's not that's so funny what you are i love that because i i think i think connecting with an opposite of you is so important. Like it is me, so powerful. Like when, like when we were talking about societal things back in the day, how yeah. friends have so much power over you. I really think trying to work. Like I have a best yeah. friend who's a who's a straight dude. Yeah, not from this country. And I was like, I talked to him about everything. I'm not yeah. talking about my husband. I talked to him about everything when it comes to like females, men, and yeah. his advice is so like. Oh. And you know oh. what changes too is when you start going like cis and trans it's like go talk to someone go talk to someone else and see what they mm -hmm. say cuz they help you so much in your relationship yeah. because I feel like so much of relationships is about balance mm -hmm. and it's about balancing out these forces and when you're so stuck in your cis ways yes. you you start you put these blinders on and you put ultimatums on Yes. Yeah. I feel like you put like if this ever happens again, it's done. Yeah. And I'm going to search for someone who never yeah, does that Yeah, that's not to me how again. it works. Never. The yeah. word never can never work in a relationship <laughs> ever. Like, I, it just can't. Like, no. ultimatums, and trust me, I we try. In our, like, weak moments, we try to put on ultimatums because it's control. We don't want that right. to happen to us again. Yeah. But it's not possible. We're human beings. Yeah. And finding, having a friendship with another person from another perspective. Yeah, right. Like you guys are saying, is so beneficial. I don't think I realized how beneficial it's it was until I heard both of you talk about this whole thing of, like, oh, I didn't know what to do. It's like, How did you find your oh, person? Do you have, a, are you allowed to talk about that? How did I find what, my person? Yeah. My husband? Uh-huh. Oh, I found him at karaoke. No, <laughs> no yeah. way. I was singing "Locked Out of Heaven" by Bruno. No Mars. way. Yeah, 
And he asked me out, and I was like, no. You, it was a random. He was a random at a bar. Random at a bar. He wrote down his number on a piece of paper. Oh my god, the love was, of my life. Really? It, I met randomly at a bar, and he ah. came up to me. Yeah. And they came up to you, and he went, "You have the most beautiful voice. Here's my farmer." And I was like, "No." No, you didn't. Yeah, I did because I was in a not good relationship with a friend. Oh. Oh, I've only. I'm. So I couldn't see it, and then a month later, he was there. He asked me out again, and I said yes. And wait. You would, were dating a friend. I was. I have a notorious habit. I wouldn't even say dating is the right what, word. What? Yes, it's it's the because the friendship. Oh, we've talked about this. Oh, that's I have another. A nasty, I'll tell you. I have, we uh, we are. That's another little subtopic yes. of dating, which is when you are hooking up with a friend. Yes, because I over and over and over again. Because what I want, I'll finish one thought before I move to the next. <laughs> what I want, my ultimate goal, is to be in love with my best friend. I want to marry my best friend. Mm -hmm. I want my, the, my partner. So it gets really confusing. Because you seek out best friends. And, and then, then I'm like, I want to date you now. But and then we start hooking up. And then it gets really confusing because I'm like, but but I am I already had these feelings with you. And now the sexual chemistry is there. Damn, what do the hell are we going to do now? I just don't think that it... I. I for me, it didn't work. Yeah, dating a yeah. best friend to to continue that for yeah. me, it didn't work. I had to meet someone out of my circle, completely opposite. Yeah, but it might work for other people. I think <laughs> it works for some people. I think the majority of any relationship is friendship, right? That's that's yeah ninety nine percent, and then romantic relationship is just there's just a couple layers on top of that. But any. Any actual successful romantic relationship is built on, on a very friendship. strong yeah. friendship. I, I would argue. But I understand, I understand you trying to seek because I did the same thing of like dating your really really good friends. For for me, it a, after time I realized it didn't work. Well, best what friendship you, what, is that's your motorcycle. What didn't? That's what you're looking for. Yeah, that's so <laughs> that's that's what of course what you want to find first. But for me, I need a partner in. To crime. find someone that is like that you're really attracted to on a romantic level first. But 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 how For do me, I separate how do I separate mm. romantic from sexual? Because you don't need to. I, I think that's different for every single person. I think it's I, so I, different. I have I, to because I, there's so much. Look we've at, talked look about at, this. Look at what's going on in West Hollywood. Look at right. the gays that yes. are I'm around. Everyone's fucking hot. So like now what is romance? Now what is romance? I yeah, think, I, think I think romance is. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's starting a relationship with someone as a friend first. That's exactly what I'm saying. I know. I think that's okay. And, that's, and this is a problem. Taylor's all the time. The friend zone. Like straight people get in the friend zone. Friend zoned all the time. Sure, but I mean, yeah. if you have your network, it. I, like I said, going back to what I was saying. Yeah. Build out that network, and you have your like group of like these are my trusted friends, and I care about these friendships, and these, mm -hmm. and a friendship can be forever. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and the problem is dating can sometimes jeopardize that. Um, that's that's a tough thing. Experienced. But if you have your network of like these are my friends, and then it then it's, you can only have so many friends where it gets to a point where it's like, all right, Shane, I'm willing. to Let me show you this. this. Let me show you this. I'm gonna open your mind a little. I, bit. Okay, okay. I feel like so yeah. so your network. Imagine your network is hot ass gays <laughs> yeah. who you also want to. Okay. So that's my network. That's where we're starting. Okay. So now I'm asking them to find someone for me because they also want to f the guy they're finding for me. Mm, interesting. <gasps> okay. You understand? I do because I well, think uh, that I think that us three have completely what we're talking about. I don't think there's one theme here. I honestly We are on completely different planets. We are planets. all on completely different that's themes. That's so crazy. And I agree. I also think that like that is really fucking hard. To be like, let me find you this guy. Yeah. But I also, but I also, I just, but also I want to go to a different, a different dimension where this same conversation is happening. But I'm going, it's just tough, dude. I know so many hot babes, and they all want to have sex with me, and I'm trying to find the love of my life. But all and these I'm babes just want to have I'm sex like, with me. All these women, man. All these women are like, let me find this hot guy for you. God, I want to. Them. Wow. But to be honest. No, Amanda's over here like, I nobody wants to date me. I have nobody. <laughs> yeah, my, nobody I'm wants short. To date me. I've never dated anyone. I'm short. <laughs> but I will say, when I have tried to do the best friend thing where you're like, oh my God, we've been best friends for years. And then you have that one night where you're like, hello? Yeah. And then you make out and then you're like, oh my God. And 
for me, yeah. it hasn't worked out because I've always wanted the friendship more. So when I met H, oh. it started off romantic and it built into that's cool a best friendship. That's cool. I think it can work so in a lot of different ways. I think I think I, everything. I think it's always different. But I think I think what ultimately though I. The problem with love and romance is that everybody's definition of it is so different. Yeah, It's yeah. not the same for most people. So it, a lot of it is about finding someone who feels about it the same way as you. I think ultimately though, it's looking for that mutual respect. Like you have that connection, yeah. you have all that stuff, but you also have the same form of respect for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is the key, I, I think. So these guys hooking up with, so the guy who's searching for someone and they just hook up with them, Maybe the respect just isn't fucking there at the start. Good fucking point. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's about respect. If, if it's... someone else is just being like, oh, okay, well, this guy told me that you have a crush on me, but I'm going to hook up with him. Like, whatever, what, wherever, whatever ecosystem Gate you're in, to gate whatever ecosystem you're in, respect is fucking number one. Yeah. Like, respect. Yeah. And, and I think, I wish I could tell my younger self that if he... If there is no respect there, if he is literally giving you all the signs that he doesn't want to be there, he doesn't want to be there, babe. Right. Move Listen. the f on. Oh, yeah. If it quacks and has flippers, it's a duck. It's it's that lesson of also when someone tells you who they are, listen. <laughs> duck boats. <laughs> if yeah. someone tells you they're a duck, they're a if duck. If someone they're shows you who they are, believe, believe them. them. Oh, 100 That's what I think, and I do think people can change, but in the early stages of dating. You're right. Respect. I think people can change, but don't expect them to change in your relationship. That's good. I think it's it, that's kind of what I believe at this point is is if you're in a relationship and they are letting you down or they're not working for you, you can try to communicate what you need. Yeah. But if you realize it's bigger than if you're asking a person to change fundamentally who they are, you should just go. I have a question. Do you? Uh, you don't have to answer it. You don't have to answer it. Do you have a one that got away? Not, 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 not necessarily that like you're like, oh, if they were here right now, I would date them. But like, you're like, oh, that could have worked and something happened where it didn't. I don't. Definitely. Yeah. You definitely do. Mine, but mine's a little too, mine's, mine's like too sad. Okay. I, um, I don't have one that I'm like, she, she... died. Yeah, he died. Okay. Um, boy. It was more like the one who got away and die but the thing is for me the one who got away is hard because it's mixed up with my town uh, and i wanted to be here uh, so i experienced the one who got away big time because i needed to move out of that town and yeah. he was never going to move out of that town yeah mm. yeah mine is like old story old as time I, story i have the one the my that got away he went to the marines i went to la at the same there time there you go we couldn't Holy i went to la crap. and he and got so deep in the town yeah. now he's and in also, cape town I love Cape Town. It's my favorite city on earth. Well, oh, uh oh, well. am I going to Cape Town? Am I hey, he's for... alive. Hey, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> he's just. Can we get cocktails just... together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, we hey. got Manhattans here. Um, I, uh, I don't necessarily have one that got away where I'm like, oh man, that would have been great. It's mm -hmm. it's more that I look back and I go, damn, I and maybe this is just from from experience and knowing who I am more mm -hmm. and allowing myself to be who I am. Cause like I said, so much of my, even into my twenties was so performative. So like, this is what dating should be. And yeah. this is what I, I'm saying what I should be saying. And I was trying so hard to impress uh, the women I was on dates with. And I think also my- But that is a thing, you have to do that. It is- it, Right, but it was so- There wasn't a it was, connection it was there so, uh, it was It was so away. overt that I was a mm. robot. But also, I think also the issue was that I was also, I think in my head of like what I should be attracted to because there's also a societal thing of even though I'm straight, it's like, but this is the type of woman that is hot. And this is, oh. and I love that. I love people exploring types and being like, oh, what do I actually Cause think? I never, I, I like never really too. had it. Yeah. I never really had a type. And the more I think about it, I was just like, I don't think I was into what conventionally was being told yeah. to me. Mm. And I think that I really struggled with that. But um, it's like the girl that you had that everyone had a crush on, and we were like, "What does she look like?" And you're like, "I don't, I know. No I don't care." <laughs> like, but but you know, if if it, I I hate to say it, but back when I was a teenager, I think I got over this pretty quickly. But you know, if people didn't talk about a girl like she was hot, I think I'd be like, "Is she hot? Oh, she isn't hot, so I shouldn't be into her." Yeah, and I look back, and I think that's where I look back, and I go, "Damn, 
I don't think that was the one. Like, I, I feel very confident that I don't think I missed out on anything life changing. But it's more that I look back and almost more so as just friendships of like, damn, I really that was a looking back, that was a really cool person. Yeah. And I think I we probably could have we could have had fun. But that's part of getting older. That's part that of is it that's too. part of I mean, I, I don't think I really allowed myself to be who I was and be interested in what I'm interested in until I was like twenty five or twenty six. Yeah, and man. it's so funny because sense. the advice from older people are it's always like Kiss the person, do the thing, make the mistake. But, but it's always that. And you know it's the the older that. people that I've been around. I don't yeah. think all older people are like that. I think older people are like some older people are like very intense about like don't make mistakes, don't get your heart broken. Really? Well, because we all speak Who's from not the people that I'm but, around. But everyone speaks from <laughs> everyone speaks from their own consequences, right? You're Which right. is why I because I go back and forth with that of of if I could talk to my younger self, would I be like, dude, just go for it? But I also would be like, you know what, man, you did what you thought was best. Yes. And I can't, you know, I can't tell you, if you do something exactly. different, then you're not you're also not living your your you're truth. Right. That was my truth. My truth was I was. I had to get out of this mindset. I had to, and it did eventually lead to me going for something completely wrong for myself and, and going through the motions for too long yeah. until I was like, oh. I'm miserable. Yeah. And then I had to have that moment. And yeah, it took 25 years, but the it, it took 25 years and I got out of it. And so yeah, exactly. I don't know. I'm like, if I go back and change things, maybe that wouldn't be good. Not Maybe not That's change. So definitely not change things. But when you're in the present. Yeah. Your uh, Jeff Probst always say always says, play Survivor like it's your second time playing. I love Jeff Probst. I Me love that this comes down too. to Jeff Probst. It always does. I love it always Survivor. does change. I love Survivor. Me too. So the much. new season starts this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he says play Survivor like it's your second time playing because you'll play a much better game that way. Yes. Yeah. You're taking risks. I you're, think you're you're yeah. not taking you're like keeping things to yourself, you're just playing it like it's a second time playing. So what if you <laughs> dated I, like it was your second time I think time what that means them? for me is that if you have an instinct when you're dating, like an instinct that feels like you do it all the time, maybe try to see a different perspective. Yeah. Maybe go against, a, I mean, I hate to say go against your instinct. But be more cognizant. But be like, huh, why do I have this instinct? Yes. Is this societal? You're, you're saying yeah. analog. Or is this. Be analytical about your just choices. Just like, yeah, explore your choices. I love that. But right. of course, I, that was not, I couldn't tell <laughs> my younger self that. Yeah. Because my younger self was like, everyone tells me not to be with this person. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because I think about all the dudes nowadays who are complaining. I'm just like, no, the, these women w wouldn't be into me or whatever. And I'm like, the women they're often talking about are like the, the quote unquote unpopular girls. It's like, it's like the nerds in high school being like, the popular girl, she would never be into me. And I'm like, would you actually have fun dating her? Yeah. yeah. You guys yeah. have nothing in common. Right. Exactly. And I think that's what I'm talking about when I look back on my younger self and I go, the girls that I was telling myself I should be into, Do I wasn't, I once like I, them? if I actually dated them, would we have a good time? Or I just, you start to realize, that's like, so hey, it. And that's especially with Instagram, like looking at people's yes. things. It's like, oh, I want to. With the hot guy this. who's like this on Instagram. Yeah, it's maybe. like we immediately like, adjust who we are to try to fit, yeah, and then we have a bad time. Mold. That's why I do think there's some truth of when people go, stop thinking about dating, stop, like remove yourself, and then it'll work out. It's because, like I said, focus on making friendships, and yeah, one of those friendships might blossom into something else. But you're just it focus on true. genuine connection with people, and also as a, as a dude, you know, when you come across like your your primary goal is to date or to sleep with someone, you are going to come off as a predator. You are like <laughs> yeah. it, that's and that's that's what's going to happen so much. Um, but I just think you you remove all of that because all of that's it, a lot of it's bullshit. And that's why I think when people go, it'll happen when you least expect it. I hate hearing that because sometimes I'm like, oh, whatever. I love your witch but voice. But I will say, thank you. I will say that when I met H, I literally had done everything to swear off dating. I saw a Reiki lady and she was like, you haven't met the one. And I was like, I'm done. I'm literally done. And then she went, okay, what do you really want in a relationship? This was actually in my vows. What do you really want in a relationship? And I was like, I really want someone to really want to be there with me. And I want them to be like a strong person mentally that yeah. I actually am into. Yeah. And she was like, great, write that down on a piece of paper. Like really write that down. 
And I wrote it down on a piece of paper, and I was like, this is so stupid. And I put it up, and I looked at it every day. I was like, cool, yeah, okay. Aww. And I looked at it every day. Wow. And then a month later, I met H. Wow. And I didn't realize okay, that I'm about that to go was. To this Reiki lady, can you literally? Me? Yeah. Oh I didn't realize that that was the thing. And then I realized, like, oh my God, that is exactly who H is. Yeah. Is he really wanted to be there? Okay. And he really wanted to know who I was as a person. Yeah. And I feel like that was a huge, like, oh, moment thing yeah. for me. And that was. That was totally in our vows. I was like, oh, I, I manifested you. I, I do. It makes me think of something I do want to say, oh, though, nice. for people listening and watching is, you know, I, as we're talking about, like, what do you really want? I think something that I am loving that I'm seeing a lot nowadays is people realizing, like, oh, I don't know if I actually want to be in a relationship in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. hell yeah, dude. Yeah. All the power or to even better, you. I don't want kids. I'm like, I, yeah, it's you should. So have kids. If it's you don't, so great. If you, you feel that, do not. Because, yeah, you look, I, dude, frankly, like, you look at, a lot of like really older people who you can tell like they did not want to be. They listened you know. to society. They, they did they what. Fucking, and back in yeah the fifties they, they had choice. And they but fanny. but I think that's also I think that's part of it. Like someone saying oh I don't want to be in a relationship for my the rest of my life I want to do my own thing. That is your love life and that is that is also you choosing yourself and choosing how love works for you. It yeah. works differently for every person, and I think that's great. Um, Being in a relationship a, does not make you a successful person. It means sure. nothing it means to nothing. anyone else. All 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 I think you need to do is just continue to discover and explore who you are. Yeah. Like literally like being in a fucking relationship doesn't make you a It, it truly like is <laughs> Are we going to go back? We're back to Oprah. to Oprah. We never left Oprah. <laughs> um there's an Oprah quote where she's talking about she's talking about her husband or something, and she's like, he doesn't live in the same house as you. And she's like, yeah. Uh -huh. And she, and she's like, well, what is that about? And Oprah's like, I don't want someone in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? Yeah, no. I'm Oprah. But I totally get it. I want a separate room for I will someone. say, I will say, I though, someone could probably live in Oprah's house and she'd never know it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> A and you know what? Family. Probably people know. do. People do. <laughs> there is a whole colony living inside her house. <laughs> Oprah right. could colonize Mars, and you're hearing it here first. <laughs> Easily. That's what I feel like. I feel like you need to silence, going back like full circle. Like There's no society. playbook. You There's need to actually silence no what everyone is telling you you should do. Ugh. And that's why you, getting another friend who has a different perspective <laughs> will make you go, Oh, I never thought about that. I don't actually need to get married if I don't want to. That's this is cool. so funny. That... I had a best friend who I started hooking up with and things got confusing. <laughs> uh, it's a tale as old as time. It's happened like four times uh... to me. Anyways, and when we were talking when we were talking about dating, like if we should or not, we had the conversation. Yeah. And I was like, he kept saying things, and I was like, who told you that? Who told you that? Mm. He's like, we can't do who said that we cannot do this? Who told yeah. where do you where are you reading these rules? Yeah. It's so because true. I don't I didn't see them. I didn't prescribe to them. I didn't say yes to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So where is this coming from? Yeah. And it was just a constant obstacle. We, There's no playbook. We build these Agreed. these spheres. Uh and I think it's like I said, going back, I think it's really bad for straight dudes right now. And my advice for straight dudes. There's nothing wrong with getting advice from another straight dude, but there's so many dudes out there who all of their advice comes from straight dudes, and yeah. then they don't understand yeah. why they can't connect with women. It's like, because you're not actually listening, listening. to any- And you're any... not actually connecting with a woman. Ask, yeah. Talk to a woman about- yeah. And if there are any straight dudes trying to experiment, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, sorry, sorry, the mic. Touching... Leave the mic alone. <laughs> um, Damn, I wish we could keep talking forever. Uh, this is. We might been... need a part two. We can. We can definitely that. do this. We can pick this I'm like, back I up. I have a whole time. list of names. Me I didn't too. Even get me to. too. Um, next Not week. Nice. Next week, though, I think. Yeah, next week we're gonna be talking about high school and middle school a little bit more. Yeah. Getting a little more in depth than just the general. Getting more whole in depth thing of it of, of like stories and real things. But uh, chance, this has been so great. Chance, you're amazing. You guys are amazing. I, literally, you guys gave me an aha moment during this, so thank you. What was, which one was it? Was like about how you guys were like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't yeah. know what to do. Oh, like, yeah. I kind of was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. The fish joke. You never know the what you're doing. The fish joke was not an aha moment. That was a wish never heard it 
<laughs> here. I, I will admit at the end of this that I did do the firework one. Okay, and you guys made fun of me. You made fun of me. Yeah. And you done it too. Really bad. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. Hey, I hope I hope you love yourself. You know, respect yourself and love yourself. Correct. You don't need to be in a relationship. And if you are, that's cool. And if you don't love yourself, how the hell, hell is anyone else going to love, love you? Okay. That's well. what RuPaul said. <laughs> <laughs> or Jeff Probst. Or Oprah, my holy trinity. Uh. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what does Jess Prof say when he lights out your thing? Uh, the tribe has spoken. Yeah, the, the tribe, tribe has spoken. spoken. The tribe has spoken. You are the Lord of the Flies. <laughs>